Hey there folks and welcome to another edition of the Geology 101 video series, Physical Geology. I am Geology Professor Sean Wilsey. Thanks for joining me for this new episode. Today in episode 18 we are going to look at unconformities and more broadly just look at contacts between rocks. We've looked at ways to figure out which rock is older through relative dating methods and now we'll kind of add some other wrinkles to the equation and come up with a way to name and also describe different contacts between rocks. As always this Geology 101 video course is modeled after my college course here that I teach and has the same curriculum, the same content, and you can supplement those lab and field experiences you would normally have in a college course by looking at some of the other field videos that I have here and some of the other content on my channel. So let's get right to it. So before we get into unconformities, which is going to be the main focus of today's lesson, we're going to first just look at the nature of contacts, what the surface that exists where we have two dissimilar rocks where they touch. There's actually a variety of ways in which two different rocks can be placed next to each other. And so we're gonna broadly look at these different types of what we call contacts. So we're gonna look at intrusive contacts, which are caused by intrusions of magma. We'll look at fault contacts, when faulting actually places two different rocks next to each other. And then we'll look at depositional contacts, where rocks are deposited atop one another. And then finally, we'll spend most of our time with this episode digging into erosional contacts, which are also called unconformities. So just to give you a little taste of what we're looking at here, here is the first type of contact, an intrusive contact where magma has intruded other types of rocks. That magma then cools and crystallizes underground uh, to form some sort of contact. So here, this photo, which is taken in western Utah near Notch Peak, you can see these zebra stripe, these banded limestones have been intruded by uh, magma, which is now cooled and crystallized into granite. So you can see the nature of this contact. Here we have two different rock types touching. And notice that this intrusive contact can be a little, little bit irregular. This one's actually a little bit more regular than others. It, it might be something where it's parallel to the layering, but a lot of times it may cut across the layering as well. So you can have these intrusive contacts have a variety of geometries to them. Um, our next one is a fault contact. So we may have um, brittle deformation features, faults, cracks in the rock where there's been movement and shifting of the rock that can place different rock types uh, uh, next to each other. So here in this photo, we have at least three uh, pretty obvious faults cutting these ash layers and some of these old soil horizons here. Uh, you can see one here, here, and here. And so these fault contacts then are placing two dissimilar rocks next to each other. And in this case, the offset between the faults is fairly small, probably on the order of just a few feet or a meter or so. But other times this can be literally hundreds or thousands of feet or meters in terms of offset. So it can be much more substantial and uh, much major amounts of offset depending on the situation. So these are fault contacts. We also have depositional contacts. So we have one layer, one sedimentary layer in this case, but it could be volcanic as well, that's been placed on top of another. So a depositional contact here, this is the Hermit Shale in the Grand Canyon with the Coconino sandstone above. So you can see the color change there. And so that contact between these dissimilar units can be um, based on color, can be based in this case on not just color, but grain size. We also have contacts that can be very sharp. This one's actually a fairly sharp contact. You can see it across the Grand Canyon. The color change is quite striking. Other times you might have more of a gradational contact where it's changing from one right one rock type to another, but it's doing so maybe over a few, you know, centimeters, feet, inches, you know, some distance of rock before it actually changes wholesale. Um, so this is a good example of a depositional contact between layers. In this case, it's sedimentary layers, but you might imagine, you know, one lava flow placed at atop another, uh, a layer of ash with a layer of lava, with a layer of sand. Those would all be depositional contacts because these are the types of rocks that are deposited at Earth's surface, both the volcanic rocks and the sedimentary rocks. So finally, we end up getting into our major topic today, and that is unconformities or these erosional contacts. So it should make sense that there's no place on this beautiful planet of ours where 
rocks have just been continuously deposited layer upon layer for billions of years. There's places where the rocks get uplifted, there's hiatuses in the depositional record, and consequently there's periods of time, sometimes long periods of time, where rocks are eroded. So erosion happens. I've seen it on a t-shirt, so it must be true. And we're going to look at a couple of these erosional contacts, which are known as unconformities. There's actually three types of unconformities. And just to kind of illustrate the point, maybe a little bit better, let me try um, showing you this with some visual examples here. Let's see if we can do this without dropping the rocks on camera here. So here's a nice piece of limestone, okay? And then we're gonna deposit on top of that limestone, oh, let's say we deposit, few layers of shale. So we've got two rock types here, limestone and shale. We can tell which one is older because we have a sequence of sedimentary rocks with the limestone on the bottom. So using the principle of superposition, the limestone is therefore older than the shale. And then let's go ahead and deposit one more rock here. Let's deposit the a sandstone on top. So now we have a sequence of three rocks, limestone, shale, and sandstone sitting on top of it. Um, but let's now imagine that instead of deposition being the primary geologic process that's at work here, let's pretend the whole area gets uplifted. So now it's at some elevated region, maybe thousands of feet or meters above sea level. And now because we're at an elevated region, the main processes that might be acting on these rocks, rather than depositing layers, we might be actively eroding the rocks. And so it's raining and snowing and maybe there's frost wedging and gravity's trying to move, break these rocks down into sediment and then move them. And so let's pretend we actually totally remove and erode away that sandstone layer. And now let's shoot, let's go a little further. Let's get rid of uh, both layers of shale through continued erosion. And now we're just back at, down to that limestone. And let's say that at this point, we have now lowered the landscape low enough. Um, those layers have been removed, they're gone now. And we're now in a favorable situation where deposition can take place again. And let's say in this case that the the primary mechanism of deposition is depositing gravel, maybe in a river system or something like that. So we're going to deposit a conglomerate right on top of it. So what we have here is we have a sequence of rocks, just two rock types. Superposition is still valid. The limestone is older than the conglomerate. But this contact, this actual just you know feather edge um, surface here between these two rocks is and unconformity. This represents some period of time. Now we don't know until we know the age of the rocks how much time this unconformity represents, but we clearly have some break in deposition and erosional period represented by this contact between these dissimilar rocks. So this is the idea behind an unconformity. Hopefully that was somewhat helpful. Okay, let's shrink me back down. There we go. And let's look at these three types of unconformities. And then what we'll do is do some quiz questions and see if you can name that unconformity. The game show sweeping the nation. So our first type of unconformity is probably the most simple one. It's exactly the one that I illustrated with the rocks here. It's what's called a disconformity. So we're gonna, in this case, deposit four layers of rocks. One, two, three, four. One is the oldest, it's on the bottom. Four is the youngest on top. We're going to uplift the whole stack and erode away um, a few rocks here, like rock layer three and four. And then um, when deposition resumes sometime later, we're gonna put these other layers down. So now we have a surface between sedimentary rocks above and below. Notice that the sedimentary rocks are parallel. That's a key distinguishing trait of a disconformity. The rocks above and below the disconformity are parallel to each other and they're sedimentary. So this again is what's known as a disconformity, okay? So there's unconformity number one. Let's move on to unconformity number two. It's gonna start very similar to this, but we're gonna add one little step, one little tweak in the equation. So here we're gonna deposit a sequence of sedimentary rocks. This time we'll just call it A, B, and C. Um, and then instead of just uplifting the whole thing immediately, what we're going to do is have these rocks get tilted. So these rocks are now uplifted, they're slanted or tilted, and then they get eroded away. 
and then we deposit rocks on top of them. So the key thing here is that the rocks above and below the unconformity are not parallel to each other. There is some sort of angular relationship between the rocks above and the rocks below. And that's what makes this a angular unconformity. So again, they're all unconformities. All of these are unconformities. We're just being a little bit more specific in giving them names, okay? And more important than the names, I try to stress to my students that, okay, yeah, tell me what an angular unconformity is, be able to recognize it, that's important. But just as important and maybe more so is being able to tell the sequence of events, being able to interpret an angular unconformity and figure out that, aha, these rocks below the unconformity were deposited first. They were originally horizontal. That's one of our fundamental principles. They were later tilted, they were eroded, and then other rocks were deposited on top of them. So there's two of the three unconformities. Let's move on to our third and final type of unconformity. So here what we have is a situation where rocks are deposited, J and K, and in this case, let's say we intrude magma. So we've got magma intruding these rocks. Um, and then at some point later, we erode down to this different rock type. So the key thing about a nonconformity is it's going to involve a different rock type besides sedimentary layers. Below the unconformity, we have igneous or metamorphic rocks, which we know form, at least the intrusive igneous rocks, forms at depth. They form underground, not at the Earth's surface. So these rocks have to be exposed in order to deposit these rocks on top of them here in the right. So this would be the nonconformity. Now, fundamentally, if you look at these two images, these two diagrams, they sort of look the same. There's just layers of sediment on top of these igneous rocks. But the key difference, this one on the left is not in nonconformity because this is when it intruded the rocks that were above it. So this would be an intrusive contact. If you think back to what we started with in this episode, an intrusive contact, we might see signs of baking of these rocks here, contact metamorphism, there could be mineralization. We might see some evidence that this rock is actually um, younger than the rocks above it. But over here, we're looking for erosion. We might see chunks of this igneous rock at the base of unit P. Um, there might be other evidence that let, lets us know that this is an erosional surface. So those are our three types of unconformities. Uh, if you go to a great place like the Grand Canyon, you can actually see all three of these at various locations. So there are several disconformities where there's units or periods of time missing between horizontal or parallel sedimentary layers. There's also places deeper in the Grand Canyon where we have tilted sedimentary rocks that sit underneath our horizontal sedimentary rocks. So there's our angular unconformity. And then finally, at the very bottom of the Grand Canyon, we have uh, metamorphic rocks and intrusive igneous rocks that lie beneath sedimentary rocks. So over here and also right here we have a nonconformity between those. So uh, fun stuff there. If you think you're ready for it now, let's go ahead and shoot shoot with some uh, with some quiz questions and see how you do. Of course, if you need longer to think about all these, you can pause the video at any point. So here I am. Uh, at a location and the unconformity is shown by that line there. Now to answer some of these questions I have to give you information about the rocks. So the rocks I'm standing on above the unconformity are a sandstone and the rocks below are more of a, a shale or, or mudstone. So look, make some observations with that photo. Maybe pause the video if you need to and then take a stab at it. You've got a one in three chance of just guessing your way to the correct answer, but hopefully you've learned and you can identify these. Okay, so again, making the observation. So as we decide what we have here, best thing to do is look below the unconformity. In this case, I have sedimentary rocks below the unconformity. So that means it's not a nonconformity. I either have an angular unconformity or disconformity. Now the second step is to look at the relationship in the layers and how they're oriented from the top, uh, from the above the unconformity to below. And notice that the layers above are somewhat gently dipping, but the layers below the unconformity are very steeply dipping. They're almost vertical. So that would make this an angular unconformity because there's an angular relationship between these two. Um, if you thought you recognize this location, or maybe perhaps you've been there, this is actually a fairly um, popular and I guess semi-sacred site amongst geologists. This is Sicker Point, Scotland. This is actually where James Hutton 
uh, was able to figure out some of the these very fundamental but important principles in geology in I think the late 1800s. So here's a little blown up shot of that contact showing you indeed you can see these vertically oriented sedimentary rocks here. The erosional surface including one clasped or eroded piece of gravel here and then these more gently dipping sandstones right here. So a little bit of a close up there showing you what that looks like. Great location, just beautiful spot. If you ever get the chance to go there, uh, you should. It's really awesome. Okay, let's do another one. So now we are, as you probably guessed, in the Grand Canyon. And we're looking at this contact right here. And this is what we see. Here's the unconformity right here. And we have 520 million year old sandstone sitting on top of 1.8 billion year old schist. So go ahead and pause the video if you need a little bit of time. And so again, what we do here is we look at the unconformity. We look below it. In this case, we have metamorphic rock. Well, now we're done. Slam dunk. Done. Don't, don't pass go. Do not collect 200. We know that if we have a igneous, or excuse me, intrusive igneous or metamorphic rock below the unconformity, it has to be a non-conformity. So that answer would be B. Very good. And that's the great unconformity, one of the cool ones in the Grand Canyon. Here's our next one. Um, we have an unconformity here, little lens cap for scale, and then we have sandstone uh, sitting over limestone. So pause the video if you need to. So in this case, we look above and below the unconformity, we see sedimentary rocks. So now we need to look and see how are those sedimentary rocks oriented? How are they layered? In this case, um, I tried to pick something I thought was pretty obvious. Hopefully you saw it too, but the, the layering in these rocks goes with the, the, the names here. So the sandstone layering or bedding is tilted in this manner. But similarly, the limestone is also running in the same direction. And so we have sandstone and limestone that are parallel to each other, which would make this unconformity a disconformity, which was answer C. How you doing? Are you three for three? You feeling lucky? Let's go a little further. Here's another unconformity. Rocks are identified. Pause the video if you need to. So here what we can see is that below the unconformity we have shale, a sedimentary rock, but you can also see very vividly that this shale is not only at high angles in terms of its layering, uh, it's pretty intensely folded and it's sitting underneath this sandstone, which is above the unconformity, which is much less steep, nearly horizontal or, or at least gently dipping. So because we have this angular relationship between the rocks below and the rocks above and the rocks are both sedimentary, that would make this an angular unconformity. So the answer was A there. Having fun? Let's do a couple more. Here is another unconformity. We've got 1.8 billion year old nice and schist sitting underneath this 550 million year old sandstone. This is in northern Utah. Uh, north of the town of Ogden. Uh, really just beautiful spot here. I did a video actually right where the yellow arrow is pointing. I actually hiked all the way up there. Actually it might have been over here more and did a video a few years ago um, on this specific unconformity. Okay, how are you doing? So again, looking at the unconformity, what are the rocks below? Metamorphic. Metamorphic means they're different than the rocks above, which are sedimentary. So that would make this a non-conformity, also representing a big period of time. That's almost 1.3 uh, billion years of Earth's history that's encapsulated by that one contact right there. Very cool. And then I believe this is our final one here. So here we have another unconformity, um, mudstone and sandstone below conglomerate above, make some observations and take a stab at this one. So here we can see the layering in the mudstone and sandstone is quite steep um, and it's definitely at an angle to the conglomerate above which is nearly horizontal or at least gently dipping. So this would be an angular unconformity. The answer here was A. So how'd you do? Hopefully you did well on all of those. And even if you didn't, that's okay, as long as you're learning and you're making progress. So that's it for this episode. Hope that was helpful, learning a little bit about unconformities. Um, you can get on the internet, type in that on a Google search and pull up all sorts of photos if you wanna see different types of unconformities. Uh, what we'll do next time in our next episode is, is take the knowledge from this episode and the previous one on relative dating methods, put them together and present to you with some puzzles. So if you like the quiz, the assessment portion of these videos, that's all I'm gonna do in the next, vi in the next episode is um, 
present you with some little geo logic puzzles and see how you do in applying these principles. A great way to test your knowledge, practice. That's how we get better at things is repetition and practice. So with that, thanks for your support of the channel. As always, thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time. Take care.